Corporate Finance Presentation Derivative Securities. Get ready, it's time to take our chance with corporate finance. Derivative securities are securities that derive their value from the underlying security, hence the word derivative. They're going to be deriving their value from the underlying security. So for example, for equity options, the value is derived from the underlying common stock. For futures contracts on things like government bonds and treasury bills, they derive their value from the government securities. And futures contracts on things like oil and wheat are going to be deriving their value from the commodities. Options. Options are a financial derivative that gives the buyer the right, but not the obligation, to buy or sell an underlying asset at an agreed on price and date. So there's some form of speculation into the future. What's going to happen into the future when you're thinking about the options? Most of the time when people first hear about an option, they think about a pure speculative type of situation you're speculating in order to receive a profit and possibly thinking of it as some kind of like a gambling type of situation in that case but note that options can also be used in a variety of ways to hedge the risk that's going to happen in the future so if there's a potential downturn if some event happens in the future that it's unlikely to happen but possible then possibly you can use things like options to lower the risk and the difference between investing and basically gambling is basically when you're doing an investing, you're taking decisions that are well thought out decisions to mitigate the risk versus gambling where you're taking on most likely a high degree of risk and just plain chance in that kind of situation. So we have call options and put options, which are tools for a wide range of option strategies designed for hedging income or speculation. So obviously, again, we do have the speculation type of thing, people trying to speculate, trying to make money on the options themselves, the call options and the put options. The income obviously is, is going to be the generation of income is the goal. But again, they can also be used for a hedging type of situation to just lower the degree of uh, risk as well. So a call option, an option contract giving the owner the right but not the obligation to buy a specified amount of an underlying security at a specified price within a specified time. The specified price is known as the strike price and the specified time during which a sale is made is the expiration or time maturity. They may be purchased for speculation or sold for income purposes. We then have the put option, which give the holder the right but not the obligation to sell a specified amount of underlying security at a specified price within a specified time frame. They are available on a wide range of assets, stock, indexes, commodities, and currencies. The put option prices are impacted by changes in the price of the underlying asset, the option strike price, time decay, interest rates, and volatility. A put option increases in value as the underlying asset falls in price, as volatility of the underlying asset price increases, and as interest rates decline. Futures contract, financial derivatives that obligate the buyer to purchase some underlying asset or the seller to sell the asset at a predetermined future price and date. It allows an investor to speculate on the direction of a security, commodity, or financial instrument, either long or short, using leverage. They are also often used to hedge the price movement of the underlying asset to help prevent losses from unfavorable price changes. So once again, you can look at this from a speculative type of standpoint to make money. The market can also be useful or is useful to mitigate losses for some components of the market. So for example, if you're a farmer or something like that, and you wanted to have a futures contract so that uh, you have someone that would be committing to purchase so much at a certain price uh, in the future. And then if there was some kind of downplay in the price for whatever reason or something like that, then that could mitigate or hedge against that type of event from happening. And of course, if you're dealing with something like farming or something like that, and you have this big time period with a big crop, then you want to make sure that uh, that if something goes wrong during that time period, you're not going to lose the entire thing. And one way to do that is to use some types of hedge and the futures contracts can be a useful market, you know, for for those types of things, making those types of industries, you know, better or easier or easier to, to mitigate 
and plan for. So we have the interest rate future, financial derivative that allows exposure to changes in interest rates. The price moves uh, inversely to interest rates. Investors can speculate on the direction of interest rates with interest rate futures, or they can use contracts to hedge against changes in rates. So you got a similar kind of thing with the interest rate changes. You could have a similar type of thing with foreign currency changing of rates as well. So you can think of a situation where if there was going to be a substantial change in rates in one way or the other, if that, or if you're thinking about foreign currencies or something like that, and if there was a substantial change, then that can have a negative impact on you. And you might use some kind of tool to give you a hedge against that event happening, even if it's an unlikely event, if it could be a harmful event or cause a sustained amount of damage if it were to occur then you might use these kind of uh, these kind of derivatives as a hedge in those cases